Ferguson, Missouri sparked a national conversation. It was the summer of 2014. Michael Brown, an 18-year-old black man, had been killed by a white police officer in Ferguson, Missouri. Community members protested in the streets. Protesters have been organized to lay down. Months later, it was a 12-year-old African-American boy, Tamir Rice, in Cleveland. And later, a black man on Staten Island named Eric Garner. Meanwhile, here in San Diego, Assemblywoman Shirley Weber was with her son watching this all unfold on TV. He says, Mom, you know what? Uh, we are in the streets and just raising issues. But the reality is you and Speaker Atkins have the juice. Because that's what exactly he said. You have the juice. He said, and you could do something about it. She did. It is time now that we as legislators match that energy. The law she sponsored mandates California officers track what they think is the race, ethnicity, and other information about the people they stop. A bill to combat racial profiling that requires officers to silently judge people they stop may seem counterproductive. But Weber says this is key to identifying and addressing bias. You look at a person and they're really multiracial. But you stop them because they look Hispanic, okay? Or you stop them because they look African-American. Or their head is wrapped and you think they're a Muslim. So the, the issue is not so much what we are, it's what people think we are. And we stop them based on that. The San Diego Museum of Man features an exhibit on race asking, are we so different? Education specialist Sidney Garcia teaches visitors about their biases. So the first step is awareness, the second step is taking action on that. Garcia says sometimes we need help recognizing our biases. Whereas the implicit ones are the ones that we aren't aware of until somebody brings them out, or until we start to be more self-conscious and self-reflect on how we move out through the world. For example, her last name, Garcia, and lighter skin color might lead you to believe she's Hispanic. I say black or African-American. Were you surprised by that? Garcia says she hears that often. When people meet me for the first time, they go, oh, I wasn't expecting that, or I wouldn't have guessed that, or are you sure, kind of questions. She says that surprise is bias, and you may not even realize it. But their face changes, or they go like that, and some of our kids do that too, and that's a bias that you're not aware of. You don't really control your face, but that's your internalized vision of what you expected somebody black or African American to look like, and it not matching what you thought. She says expectations of a person's appearance or personality have been shaped throughout history. She points to an old IQ test that gave soldiers two minutes to look at modified pictures, like a bowler with no bowling ball or a house with no chimney, and asked them to draw what was missing. But for people who grew up in an area without bowling or had different looking homes, they scored poorly. They say you have a bunch of people immigrating from a certain country, they all do poorly on this test, and so the thought is, oh, well, that's because this group of people is less intelligent. For law enforcement, the Racial and Identity Profiling Act mandates officers recognize their perceptions by logging them. The RIPA board has a monumental task. And the law created an advisory board to help address them. Co-chair Andrea Guerrero says the board will use the perception data to inform policy and training recommendations. But if Officer A and Officer B are in the same beat um, then, and we're still seeing a disparity, then we need to look deeper. She says the law was a grand step toward accountability for a group that exercises significant authority. In order for us to grant that authority, we need to be vigilant about how it's used. Weber says even her son was impressed. He thinks I'm probably the most powerful woman he's ever met, which is unusual because he didn't think that before and he's in his 30s. But the law applies only to police. Realizing your bias is still optional. For you, there's the Museum of Man. Taryn Mento, KPBS News.